So what do you guys think of the new set? I, for one, am really digging it. I think buying this $2.5 million house for this view, totally worth it. Yeah, and I didn't stop there. I also got myself a beach house out in Malibu. Let me just match the lighting here. There you go. Now look at this ocean view. But sometimes it gets a little bit lonely up here in the beautiful mountains of Malibu. So I like to, you know, have an, another place for some nightlife, get some skiing in this winter. Huge shout out to our sponsor, DJI, for sponsoring this episode. First of all, they gave us upgrade allowance, which we've needed to make this work. Backgrounds like this one have been shot on the DJI Mini 3. And it's honestly impressive how, even though their smaller drones are considered entry level, like the amount of details that I can actually see just coming up close i mean this is the amount of quality you can get out of entry-level drones these days really excited to utilize this set it's been a, a pretty long time since i've had a set that i'm just like oh i love this and last time was probably when we set up the backdrop and we ran with that for a while okay who is that who is that? That's not me. It's funny how you don't even realize you gain weight until you look at some old photos or the doctor calls you and goes, hey, your cholesterol is high and you're pre-diabetic, which kind of happened to me. So we're kind of in this process of just like trying to reintroduce ourselves to some good food, eating more vegetables. This has been a nice little reminder to always prioritize health first, even though it's not fun to starve yourself. But anyways, let's go ahead and go back to before we had all this set up benefits of not having children is you have extra room. There would be like a baby cradle right here. Nope. <laughs> and enjoy every square inch of this house until that day comes. If I wanted to turn this bedroom into a giant video wall, how, how much would that cost me? It probably cost you like a hundred and something K. Oh, a hundred something K. And then you would also need to upgrade the power in your house considerably, probably four 30 amp outputs. The Bromson processor would run you like 20K. So yeah, you'd probably be like 150K. I, I think my budget's about 1% of that. <laughs> How about if I just want a window that yeah. looks like I have a nice view? At Costco, there was a sale for 55 inch TVs. Recorded all the TVs at 240 frames per second, check which one's flickers. Can I take three of them, put them on their sides? You'd have an edge between each one. Right, but if I'm trying to make it look like a window, I could make it look like a window frame and just put like a yeah. little bar through it. I mean, any screen will work. I mean, we've done video displays on a wall. All right, window number one. What's a good way to hold this vertically? Should I just put this on this chair? <laughs> Dylan, it's the most expensive TV stand ever. Well, with me, you get like years of experience. Don't you hate it when you have to type in passwords like this? God, this yeah. is gonna take forever. Unable to connect it, ah! It took me 16 years to type in that password and it didn't work. I guess we're gonna try again. That's not like pretty realistic or does it just look like there's a guy back there holding a TV? Does it look like a TV with legs? Why don't you just use the actual windows you have in the room? We have the view of brick walls. So, oh cool, so we can adjust the brightness. So this is useful to be able to adjust the exposure of the screen. Okay, this background's looking a little bit better now. Huh? Yeah, this is a little more realistic. It's on YouTube, right? Shout out to a- uh, Yeah, is to it? Cozy Sounds. Now we have to match the lighting. Welcome to my loft on the 80th floor, yes. I paid $12,000 a month to live here. All right, excellent work, Dylan. Do we need to hire two more Dylans for <laughs> if we want to do three TVs? This should just hook on. Window number one, complete firmware update. Is it just me or does every electronic on this planet require way too many firmware updates? Now the whole concept of using a display to fake a background or environment, it's nothing original. We made a video a while back checking out a mixed reality stage on a big scale. And more recently, I had a chance to check out how virtual production is used in smaller spaces. I'm Sam Nicholson, uh, founded Stargate Studios. And we've been working on virtual reality, Pan Am, Walking Dead, Ugly Betty, CSI 24. This is unusual because you're turning the set. What we've got is Sony Venice 2 with the C-LED wall, pro lights, Kena flows, everything tied in with motion and coding so that we can do 360s around the set. What's the difference between this and a giant TV in the background? High refresh rate, which gives us the ability to shoot up to 200 frames a second. A much higher dynamic range than a television. You want the highlights to almost clip like real lights do, real sun. It's really Always. maximizing the space. So you wanna to go to daylight? Yeah. That's the other thing we can do is we can change light extremely fast because we are pixel mapped on the lighting. And the resolution that's required to get this plate back there. These are 8K heavy raw 
Venice 2 plates with all the color we can get, Rec 2020 and beyond. As you move the camera, the whole background shifts, so it maintains yeah. that parallax. So it's an illusion. I mean, these are all magic tricks, right? Right. So these are tracking markers mm -hmm. that's being watched by these six cameras, or are they cameras or infrared? Yeah, they're cameras. They're, these are OptiTrack cameras. This is mocap technology redone for camera tracking. Wait a second. We were just in a beautiful place by the water. Everything's Sucks. fake. Even the, even the ice is fake. All right, so now that we have a virtual window that can pretty much take us to wherever we want, it is time to get some backdrops. And that is where our sponsor DJI comes in. Let's give this a shot. So right now we're flying the Mini 3, which is the latest entry level drone from DJI. And for a budget drone, it delivers a surprisingly good 4K image. And what makes this drone in particular perfect for the shots I'm trying to get is its ridiculously good battery life. Right now I'm flying it with the optional plus battery, which is the setup that gave me my personal longest flight record. And I want these shots to be as long as possible so I don't have to loop it in the background. So now I just have to find a good spot to go and sit in. I'm thinking having these rocks in the foreground is gonna make our view a little bit more believable. Now, if I really wanted to, could I hike this camera up there and get a shot like that? I could, but I just spent the last couple of days falling on a snowboard and my body just cannot take any more abuse. So this is gonna be much easier. So the wind has started to pick up a bit, but that's one of the nice things about this Mini 3 is it still has level five wind resistance. So it still looks pretty locked off. Now the camera specs on this little guy, pretty impressive. One over 1.3 inch sensor, F1.7 lens. You can get started fine for 559 bucks with the base controller and I love how these minis have this notch cut out right here for the camera which means you could tilt almost all the way up during flight you can go into portrait mode where the camera actually turns now me personally if I could have one and only one drone I would opt for the upgraded version of this the mini 3 pro which has the same great camera and lens but a few upgraded features like notice there's forward collision sensors rear collision sensors 4k 60 in descent alike -like instead of the 4k 30 in fixed color so that gives you more flexibility in post to color grade and access to dynamic range fold up to to be really nice and compact thank you so much to dji for sponsoring this episode links down there in the description if you're thinking about picking up one of these so now let's go ahead and download these clips and try to throw them in the background this is a light from aperture let there be light oh yeah oh hey that's that is pretty bright and that's only 30 percent too so what's cool about these mats is that they're super lightweight and soft optional frame this is gonna be perfect for tighter spaces where i don't have much space behind the desk but i can just mount this back there and still have a nice soft source instead of trying to figure out how to get a big old softbox back there. So this is Aperture's Amaran tube light. This is just a two footer right here. And see how there's a sun right here? So there should be some nice warm light coming, right? Uh -huh. Warm light at your service. Whoa. This view makes me feel like we won the lottery and we got a fancy house on the hill. <laughs> <laughs> the image looks great. I don't. What are you talking about? You look beautiful. I'm getting a tan. You're a little late Luke. for Halloween. Oh, yeah. Now I want this space to be fully controlled so I can film day or night. So this stuff here, Duvetine, is really good for blocking out light. And I still don't know how to spell Duvetine. When I first started YouTube, I actually did have a real window in the background. And I remember one of the things that was tricky about that, the lighting will change pretty drastically every time a cloud goes over or whatever. So from one shot to the next, it might just be like bright, dark, bright. And now I'm gonna go ahead and figure out what lens combo I wanna use. Oh, the UPS truck. There's a UPS truck going back there. Yeah, look. Carrie, could you be me? <laughs> That's what you see when I'm filming. All right, let me go ahead and get you up on the small HD here. Makes it so much nicer to just be able to look at a larger screen live. If you keep the TVs on that wall, you can put the curtains up much higher on the wall and just dangle them down so it'll look more luxurious. I'm getting quite a bit of spill from this light all around the background. I generally want this to be nice and dark. So grid time, Velcroed in. I think you should build out something to cover up the base of the TV. So it'll almost look like a bay window, having like a little plant over there. See, this is both of our worlds combined here. Your world, plants, and my world, sea stands. You know what would really sell it is if we got like a little like mini couch and then the dogs were sleeping on it. Even like your camera stuff or any more gear that you get just to place whatever you're working on at the time back there behind you, that could be nice. Now to feed the image to the TVs, I just have this Asus ZenBook. Got this USB-C to this adapter, which has four HDMI outs. And the PC just kind of recognizes everything as separate monitors. So I just arranged them to be portrait and vertical like this. And I just play a video clip and just 
spread it out through all the monitors. Now there are these video processors. Those would be nice because then you could just plug in one HDMI input and you could feed any source to it. And it'll automatically divide it up. Some of the nicer ones, you could even tell it how big or thick the seams are so that the image just seems more fluid. It doesn't do the jump when it goes from one TV to the other, but they tend to be a little bit more expensive. And honestly, I think this is good enough. I mean, the way I picture using this is that it's out of focus for a majority of it. Anyways, I like having this lamp here. There's actually a piece of paper that's in here that I used as diffusion just to try to soften it. But this is an aperture B7C, so little LED light. Throw this one in here, I'm connected to the Sidus Link app. So I could get really funky with the colors and do this whole but honestly, most of the time I just go for like the boring color. Now let's try to get a nice little evening shot here. I just have a preset for that and everything switches out. Huh, pretty cool, huh? This lamp right here, if I turn it off, it, it's still running. So th there must be a battery inside of here. Can I just pull it out completely? Oh yeah, that's cool. I do also like the idea that I could just zoom in and do some cool producty shots like this. I, look at this, this looks sick actually. For a while, I'll be honest, not too excited to film in the studio space. It just feels old after a while, but here I can just keep going out, shooting new backgrounds. I can't take credit for this background, by the way. This is a, a shot from Storyblocks. Also notice that we got some curtains, but also I got like a little piece of sheer. I'm hoping that these little things will just convince people just a little bit more that this is not a bunch of TVs. Nobody puts a sofa in front of the TV facing the other direction. Right, still trying to figure out a few things to put on the shelf. Of course, we have our Alexa. I just have these Aperture MCs. I have one hooked up up here and one just taped on here. But right now I'm ordering these adhesive metal plates that I can just stick up here. So that way I can just magnetically attach all these, have that flexibility. I'm trying to keep everything Aperture lighting in here so that I can control everything through that one side as Link app. But I feel like building out a set now is so much more fun because all these lights are full RGB. So that just gives us so much more flexibility than we used to have back then. Like just having a bicolor light was really cool. Now we have all the colors we could possibly want. Size of this set right here, we are about 11 feet wide from side to side. TV all the way up to the camera is a little under 12 feet. And we have eight foot ceilings. So, you know, pretty standard. Nothing fancy in terms of space. You can adapt the size probably to your space and still get a similar effect. Yeah, because you could really just have one TV and put curtains around that. So far, one of my favorite things about this is I kind of get to go out and shoot backdrops like this. And like this, for example, I shot off a rooftop on my birthday. So happy birthday to me, yay. But like the view that I was able to capture then, I get to re-experience it every time I film with this backdrop. As for audio, I'm still contemplating if I wanna use the Shure SM7B or just use these DJI mics. I mean, what's nice about these is that I have full range to just move to wherever I want and not have to worry about being kind of tied to this mic. This is a dynamic mic. So generally speaking, you have to be pretty close to have it sound good. But when you are, listen to how my voice sounds when I'm recording on the Shure SM7B. And this is how my voice sounds when I'm talking on the DJI mics. Now these displays back here, they're all the same exact screen and model number and everything, but there is definitely a little bit of inconsistency. So I think I just have to do a calibration. I mean, since everything's just hooked up to the PC, I think I could just do it with those simple calibration tools where I put the little sensor in front of the screen, let it run its thing. The best part of all this is no more, we're losing the light. And of course, without Carrie's help, we wouldn't have these beautiful plants. Plants are kind of the sh They're awesome. They just make everything kind of look nicer. I would never be able to keep one alive. So I'm glad I'm you glad said that because I actually like just bought more plants yesterday. <laughs> I love the shot and I think it looks really good, but there's this rule with cinematography that you're never supposed to aim for like the prettiest image. You're always supposed to be going for the best shot for the scene or whatever is happening. And I think one of the things that's important with YouTube is that there's like a sense of like rawness and a sense of closeness. So in the past I would use a 20 mil, which is pretty wide. And I like the closeness that you feel out of something wider. Problem is it's a little bit tough to do that here. So this is almost a 70 mil and we just pushed it back and this compresses the space, which is important because we can't really show the edges, <laughs> right? I can't really go all the way out to an 18 or 20 without just losing the illusion. But the other way to make a scene feel a little bit more close is by eyeline. Maybe the word you're looking for is casual. Yeah, yeah, that's it. 
That's exactly right. Casual. <laughs> I want it to be a little bit less professional, a little bit more casual. I think the background is good the way it is. We just have to rotate the table. So I'm facing the camera. I could be like, hey, today we're talking about blah, blah, blah with special guests, Carrie blah, blah, and blah. Peta. This is gonna look like crap right now because we haven't lit it yet. So let's go do that. You know how this is perfectly parallel to the bottom of the frame? The tough part about that is it's always hard to get it perfect. It's always slightly, slightly off. So if we do like a little intentional offset like this, I love the idea that I can just go straight from talking to you guys and I can swap out the background and the lighting and then I can come over here, work on the computer a little bit and I'll cut to the carry cam as she gives some very valuable input. Why is everything so expensive? I may go ahead and run a third camera so that then we could kind of have like a little back and forth going this way. Close up angle like here, if I want to show you some stuff up close, like, hey, check this out. Isn't that cool? Interesting conversations and funny talk. And then I could just turn around and go back to just a regular angle like this, pull up some stuff on the computer. I do kind of like the other angle a little bit more aesthetically, but I think this one probably is going to work better if you have somebody here. Since this is a 4K, I can probably extract a close up shot out of this thing. So it's kind of like I have a bunch of different camera angles going. But yeah, I think overall this 35 is working and I still have that headroom. We're not seeing the tops of the TVs. All right, so now it's like day 8,000 of working on the set. That's one of the things I really have a hard time with is finishing up something because I always want to just keep working on it and, until forever. But at certain angles, you could kind of see a little gap between the TVs. And at first I was thinking about getting fancy and putting like a, a piece of wood here or something and painting it. But honestly, I think a piece of gaff tape is going to work just as good. It's always fun to see how much you can really get away with. I mean, once you lock down your camera angles and all that stuff, you know exactly what's in frame. Then you just go in and just do some patchwork. Now, when we were making the anamorphic video with Atlas, I was kind of inspired by this light that they had that was retrofitted to be an LED. So I kind of want to try to pull a page out of the Atlas book. These are the fixtures that I really learned on. But honestly, like with LEDs being so good these days, I just these use so much power. So I pulled out the bulb and I think I could just put this thing in here. Magnetically attached it straight onto this reflector back here. So I don't know, it looks pretty convincing, right? And since it's attached to the reflector, look, I got actually kind of change the shape of the beam. You kind of tell that it's not perfect, but I mean, hey, now out of the 650, I have full dimming control as well as color temp control, but most uniquely, it's full RGB now. I definitely want this light to have two purposes. One, to be kind of cool back here to fill out this space a little bit, but also work as a light to light someone that's sitting back here. Really utilizing these little MCs for this set, but the, the thing is that they are battery powered, so I don't want it to die halfway through a set. So my plan is to run a little USB-C to all of them. All right, so here is how it kind of looks in its final form, but it's not really a final form because every single time I look at the shot, I'm just like, I want to change this or I want to add a plant right here. That hanging plant I want to put on this side right here. Like there's just an infinite number of things I want to still experiment with. But I think for now this works. And for my fill light right here, I can just use my laptop that is just slightly out of frame. I have Photoshop open and I can dial in different colors. Green, purple, red. So in a way, a laptop is kind of, uh, you know, an RGB light. I usually do my comment reads off the phone, but maybe I can just make it like an overlay right here somewhere. It has this look. So top comments from Christian. Hey, Gene, would you rather get confronted by 100 potato sized jets or one jet sized potato? Holy crap. This is by far the most like comment in that last video. Bloomy Licious says asking the important questions. This took some serious forethought, leaving this video on pause until Gene answers this. Uh, all right. Being confronted by a bunch of tiny jets, it, that actually sounds terrifying. I'm just picturing like a bunch of FPV drones that are jet powered just or on the other hand a jet sized potato So basically just a massive potato that just sounds incredibly delicious and I would go for that I don't even think I can follow that comment up with anything else So I am going to wrap this one up here Thank you guys so much for watching click on stuff if you like and hope you enjoyed this build video set thing that we did and that is all to loot see you later